What's inside the world's first cell phone? Let's go back to Alexander Graham Bell's creation of the first telephone, which he created in the late 1800s. He was able to obtain a patent for his creation in March of 1876, which launched the field of phonics as we know it today. Bell had no idea that he was setting the stage for a technological miracle that would completely change the way we interact and communicate. When Bell first gazed at his creation, it was more than simply a device. He had an idea for a tool that would have the power to alter the course of everyone it came into contact with. He gave the telephone its name, which contributed to the hope of a new era of communication. But the public's initial response was a little lackluster. It took some time for people to realize how important Bell's invention was. It wasn't extremely interesting or helpful to them. It appeared to be a typical creation that would not cause much of a stir in society. Nevertheless, time had a way of realizing Bell's creation's full potential. Days became years and everyone realized how much this technology would affect them. This idea represented the drive to create links between individuals, which would change the way we live and communicate, rather than merely being about wires and circuits. It sparked a group endeavor to create a society where communication breaks down barriers and unites people, much like a beacon illuminating the path. Bell's creation catalyzed a revolution in communication. From those modest beginnings, it ultimately cleared the path for the founding of the Bell South Corporation. This business had a significant role in the introduction of landlines, those recognizable cables that link homes. As time passed and technology developed further, it played a significant role in ushering in the era of cellular towers. These towers are the unsung heroes that enable wireless communication. They now watch over our landscapes like quiet sentinels. We are now able to communicate with each other wirelessly, without the hassle of wires or limits, because of these enormous buildings. The globe seems smaller and more interconnected as a result of these towers, which function almost as invisible bridges that carry our voices over great distances and bring us together in talks. It's amazing to consider how an idea that was at first deemed dull ended up being the cornerstone of modern communication. Bell's creation was more than just a technological advancement, it offered a doorway to a future in which our relationships were not limited by distance. Thus, keep in mind the journey that started with Alexander Graham Bell's vision the next time you pick up your phone or hear the comforting ring of a real landline. Reminding us that even the most basic ideas can grow into something truly amazing, this seemingly simple invention from back then has become ingrained in our everyday lives. The first mobile device was invented when? Early in the 1970s, Martin Cooper was employed by Motorola. He set out to create something significant in the phone industry, and you know what? He succeeded. Martin Cooper invented the first mobile phone call, which is a significant invention. Because no one had done it before, it was a big thing. Martin had spent years putting a lot of effort into this project. Finally, he achieved history on October 17, 1973. He unveiled the radio telephone system, a handy new mobile phone technology. The Dynadac 8000X was the main attraction. Martin was in New York City, a crowded metropolis full of enormous structures. He made the first call with the Dynac AC 8000X out there on the street. He called Joel Engel, a knowledgeable man from a different business named At and T, so it wasn't just any call. Joel resembled Martin's amiable adversary in the tech industry. There was more to this special call than just using the phone. It was a momentous occasion that altered everything. The Dynadac 8000X evolved from a simple phone to a means of facilitating communication between individuals wherever they may be. There is more to Martin Cooper's tale than his invention of a wonderful device. It's about a man who put a lot of effort into creating something great. Martin called Joel, but it felt more like a, hey, we did it, kind of conversation. It demonstrated that anyone could create amazing things if they put their minds to it and sparked an entirely new method of employing these gadgets that is still in use today. Therefore, because of Martin Cooper, these stopped being just gadgets and started serving as a means of communication for all of us. Dynamic 8000X. Let's examine the Dynav AC 8000X, the first mobile device in more detail. The svelte and elegant cells of today were not like this early type at all. It was 33X 4.5X 8.9 in size, weighing 1.1 kilograms and was fairly thick in comparison to contemporary ones. Just think of loving something heavier than we do now. It was a game changer despite its bulky appearance since it allowed users to make calls without being connected to a landline for the first time. The catch is that the Dynav AC 8000X was not without its limits. It only let you converse on it for 30 minutes at a time and it took 10 hours to fully charge. On March 13, 1983, it was released for USD 3995 When we compare that price to what we pay now, it is rather high. Interestingly, the Dynav AC 8000X gained a lot of traction despite its bulky design and constrained functionality. In the year following its release, around 300,000 units were owned globally. 
It signaled the start of a new era in communication and paved the way for the development of today's sophisticated cell phones. By the time we get to today, we have made great progress. The super-fast 5G mobile network and other technological developments have made mobile phones into the smart devices we use today. These days, mobile phones are like little computers in our pockets, unlike in the past when they were only used for phone calls. Consider how much more you can accomplish with a single smartphone than just place calls. You can watch your favorite movies, play video games, socialize, take notes, watch the internet, play video games, view movies, have an up-to-date map, get directions, go to a good doctor's appointment, and even carry your job with you. It's amazing how far technology has come from the Dynac AC 8000X to current gadgets. The Development of Smartphones How have smartphones evolved? Well, they became well-known in the 1990s. Roughly 11 million individuals used mobile phones in 1990. However, over 5 billion people use mobile phones globally today, that's 68% of the global population. A study by Data, a portal in collaboration with We Are Social and Hootsuite, found that individuals use these gadgets for roughly 30% of their waking hours. Following Motorola's initial mobile device success, several businesses entered the market. In 1987, Nokia released the Mobirus Cityman, which was much lighter than the original. Then, in 1988, Samsung entered the market with its SH100, which despite its poor sales, helped pave the way for later developments. Smartphones have become more sophisticated over time. A significant event occurred on December 3, 1992. The first text message was sent. During a Christmas dinner, someone at Vodafone sent the director of the company a simple Merry Christmas. That changed everything. Around the same time, cell phones were very popular in Spain. When Movistar launched at the end of 1995, there were almost a million users, a 125% increase over the previous year. At that point, people began using cell phones daily. They transitioned from being a neat device to becoming an everyday fixture in our lives. The age of smartphones. The cordless device was followed by the introduction of the first smartphone. The first mobile device featuring a touchscreen and applications was developed in 1994 and was called the IBM Simon. It was a big step, even though it didn't become very popular. After that, slider phones started to appear, such as the Motorola Start AC, and they brought with them a wonderful feature, vibration. As soon as phones began to vibrate, QWERTY TI keyboards were included. The first cell phone with a keyboard was the Nokia Communicator 9000, which was released into the market in 1996. It was more than just a standard keyboard. It could perform word processing, email, and fax tasks. Subsequently, the Siemens S10 emerged in 1998, showcasing the world's first color screen. With the turn of the 2000s, phones began to evolve in appearance. They grew lighter and smaller, with the Nokia 3310 mobile taking center stage. Because of its incredibly long battery life, this one is practically legendary. You might spend the entire day discussing it or simply not charge for a whole month. More than 126 million Nokia phones were sold because people adored them. The Nokia 3310 made a lasting impression on technological history and came to represent mobile phones. Enjoy the video? Don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a comment below. Your support means a lot and helps us bring you more great content. Thanks for watching.